The routes for the Tour de France and the Tour de France Femme Avec Swift have been revealed. In this video, we're going to tell you exactly what the men's and the women's peloton will be taking on next July. First up, here are the races in a nutshell. The men will cover 3,404 kilometres, climbing through five mountain ranges, eight mountain stages of which four will be summit finishes, four hilly stages, eight stages for the sprinter, and only one time trial, giving it a total of 22 kilometres against the clock. The women's will cover 956 kilometres, two mountain ranges, four flat stages, two punchy stages, one summit finish on the Tourmalet and one 22-kilometre individual time trial to conclude the race. A reminder that subscribers to GCN Plus will be able to watch both races live on GCN Plus in 2023. Territory restrictions apply, so please check whether it will be available where you are. We'll have all the pre- and post-race breakaway shows to truly dissect the racing, as well as plenty of additional extras on the app for you to enjoy and get involved in the debate whilst the racing is happening. Now though, let's dive into some greater depth about what we'll all have to look forward to next summer in France. Starting off with the men who will begin their tour in Spain for only the second time in history. The only other time was in San Sebastian in 1992. Bilbao will host the Grand Depart in 2023. This time though, with a 185 kilometer opening stage, which race director Christian Prudhomme has labeled as a puncher's delight. The likes of Alaphilippe, Van Aert and Van der Poel will be licking the lips at the prospect of pulling on the first yellow jersey of the race. With 3,300 meters of elevation, it is one of the hardest starts to the Tour de France in recent memory. The longest stage of the 2023 edition comes early on on stage two. It's 209 kilometers heading from Vittoria Gastez to Stan Sebastian. The Dreisbel climb features inside the last 20 kilometers of the stage and is well known in the pro peloton as it's also a regular feature of the one day Classica San Sebastian. After the sprinter friendly stage three, stage four of the first week will see the peloton firmly back in France with a stage from Dax heading east to Nogaro, which potentially gives the sprinters another moment to flex. However, that stage sets us up for a massive day to follow in the tour's opening week. Stage five will be a 165 kilometer stage containing 3,400 meters of elevation from Pau to La Rune, which potentially sets the cats amongst the pigeons, allowing the possibility of GC gaps with a downhill run off the Col de Marie Blanc in the final 20 kilometers of the stage. Stage six, however, will be a true Pyrenean test, featuring a summit finish climbing out of Col de Rey to Cam Basque. They will have climbing from the very start, as well as the iconic Cols of the Aspan and the Tourmalet to contend with too, making up a total of 3,750 meters of elevation gain. Stage seven and eight are the transitional stages as the race heads towards the Massif Central. Bordeaux and Limoges will host what are likely to be the next opportunities for the sprinters. Finishes which are certainly to the liking of Mark Cavendish who actually spoke to us shortly after the presentation. A lot of opportunities for sprinters but we have to get there first. Um, but there's some nice sprints. I think what's beautiful about the sprints next year um, is a uh, long finish straight. Old school Tour de France sprints, you know, more than a kilometre straight road on a lot of the finishes in the final. So you'll be able to see if you look down from the finish line, you can see the, the Flamme Rouge, the, the final kilometre. That makes for a big boulevard Tour de France sprint like I used to watch growing up. So. There is a lot of passion, a lot of emotion when you talk about the sprint in the Tour de France. You have to be there in 2023. Oh, I love it. It's Tour de France. It's, it's given me my life. It's still, you know, I still believe I can write chapters there. And uh, that's why it's magical to always experience it. Could 2023 be the year he finally breaks the record with 35 Tour de France stage wins? Stage nine will finish off the tour's first week with a summit finish on the Puy de Dom after 184 kilometers. It's the stage cycling historians have been waiting for. The climb makes its first appearance at the race since 1988 and has played host to some of the most famous incidents in years gone by, since the first rider to conquer it, Fausto Coppi, in 1952. 
At 13.3 kilometres long, with over 7% average gradient, it'll make for a big end to the first week. But what makes the Puy de Dome stand out, though, quite literally, is the landscape. It can be seen from miles away and will make for a stunning climax to what is sure to be a thrilling opening week's race at the Tour. It's um, also Bastille Day, so expect for a big festival atmosphere. Stage 10 to 12 are a mix between opportunities for an early breakaway and the sprinters, depending on who's motivated and how the bunch decide to race it. But it's that 13th stage, unlucky for some, which will prove to be decisive. Stage 13 starts in Rouen, finishing on the Grand Colombier, and will arguably be one of the key moments of next year's race. Standing at 17 kilometres long and 7.1 average gradient, it is only featured in the tour twice before. The first in 2012, when Thomas Vockler led over the summit, going on to take the stage victory, and the second in 2020, um, when it's featured as a summit finish and it was won by Tade Pogacar. The stage itself is only 138 kilometres long. It will be a fast-paced affair too. From here though, the race stays close to Mont Blanc in the Haute-Savoie region for the next three stages. Stage 14, 152 kilometres long with 4,200 metres of climbing. From Anne's to Morzine will throw in all the big climbs into a single stage. Col de Coup, Col de Fer, Col de Ramaz and the dreaded Col de Zouplan will precede the downhill run towards Mouzine, where the most recent arrival was in 2016. It will also be next year's route for the popular sportive La Tape de Tour. The second part of the Mammoth Weekend features 4,300 metres of elevation. Stage 15 includes three massive alpine tests before the final climb in Saint-Trevay after 180 kilometres. The peloton then pauses in saint for a second rest day before taking on the final week. Now, if you're wondering where the time trials are, here it comes. Blink and you will miss it. Stage 16, just 22 kilometres long, and that means the 2023 Tour de France will have the least amount of time trialling kilometres since time trials were introduced to the Tour in 1934. It also features over 600 metres of elevation, so by no means is it a time trial specialist course. That precedes a mountainous stage 17 to Courchevel via the Col de la Lose. 28 kilometre climb at 6% will be the highest point of the 2023 edition at 2,304 metres above sea level. It'll definitely be a tricky day for the GC contenders. Stage 18 sees the tour head west and move away from the high Alps with a relatively long flat 186 kilometre stage to bourg en bresse during stage 19, the race will travel 173 kilometres through the Jura region for another likely sprint finish, especially in the light of the fact there is an eight kilometre long final finish straight. That all set things up for a massive penultimate stage featuring no less than five categorised climbs in the space of just 133 kilometres, including Ballon de Sasse, Le Petit Ballon and the Col de Plaza Oiseau en route to Le Maxstein. Those climbs already invoke some epic memories, especially last year at the Tour de France Femme Avec Zwift, where Annemiek van Vleuten absolutely destroyed everybody on the Petit Ballon and laid claim to that yellow jersey in La Max Stein. It'll also be the first time since 2019 that the penultimate stage wasn't a time trial. After that, we then have the usual finish in Paris to look forward to on the Champs-Élysées. The last chance for the sprinters and also the last chance for us to see the Tour finish down that famous boulevard for a while. Next year it appears likely that the Tour will stay away from Paris to avoid a clash with the Olympics. That's the men's route though it's a belt and a good mix of attacking and also the classic mountain finishes that we all love. Another key rule change to next year's race is the reintroduction of the extra bonus seconds of six of the key climbs dotted throughout the race in bid to encourage the riders to attack further away from the finish line. Not that the Tade Pogacar and the Remco Ava pools of the world require much encouragement when it comes to attacking. The Tour de France Femme Avec Zwift begins on the 23rd of July, the same day as the men's race finishes. However, this year, instead of starting in Paris as the men's race concludes, the women will instead race their grand depart from Cremont Ferrand. True to the promise of race director Marion Roos, the women's race begins to break away and develop its own identity in its sophomore year. 
Team size will move up to seven riders per squad in 2023-2, a change from the six in the previous edition. After a gentle start on the Pancake Flat Roads, there will be a sting in the tail on stage one in the form of Cote de Tertol, which tops out at nine kilometres before the finish. It's a 1.7 kilometre ascent with an average gradient of 7.2. So it could provide an opportunity for the punchy riders to outmuscle the sprinters for the first yellow jersey. We are well into the massive central on stage two, which features 2,500 metres of elevation over 148 kilometres between Clement Ferrand and Mauriac. Again, the final could suit the punchier riders with another lumpy finish. Stage three, despite holding five categorised climb, could be the first opportunity for the sprinters with a pan flat final 10 kilometres. The stage will be 147 kilometres long and finish in Monte Nacolasso. Stage four is an epic, measuring 177 kilometres long and has an Ardennes classic feel about it, with three categorised climbs crammed into the final 40 kilometres before the finish in Rodez. The final climb, the Côte Saint-Pierre, comes in the closing kilometres, only 560 metres long, but 10.1 average gradient. Definitely a punchy finish. More brutal climbs follow on the 126 kilometre long stage five, which features Côte de Najac and Côte de la Guepi. The former is a 2.1 kilometre climb at 7.4 average gradient, and the latter a 1.5 kilometre wall at 9.6 average gradient. The home straight in LB will resemble the one we had in the 2019 tour, where Wout van Aert took his first Tour de France stage win. The last 17 kilometres or so will be mostly downhill to the line, so could favour a smaller group who can get away on those earlier climbs. Stage six offers the sprinters one more chance to shine before the final weekend, which kicks things off on stage seven on Saturday, which will feature the Col das Pan, which made its debut way back in the tour in 1910, before a summit finish up the iconic Col de Tourmalet. They will climb the classic east side from Sainte Marie de Compagne, which measures 17 kilometers and averages 7.3 average gradient. The race will conclude the following day in Po with the Tour de France a Femme Avec Swift's first ever individual time trial. Poe hosted La Course by La Tour de France back in 2019, as well as a punchy time trial course at the men's Tour de France in the same year, which threw up a surprise winner in Julian Alaphilippe. At 22 kilometres in length, it offers plenty of chances for strong time trialers to claw back time and potentially see a change in hands in the yellow jersey on the final day. 956 kilometres of racing across three regions, 11 departments and two mountain ranges. It's sure to be a thriller. Those are the Tour de France routes then. The action in July awaits. But let us know down in that comment section which of the stages you are most looking forward to. And if you're thinking of heading over to watch the action roadside in France, where might be the best place to go and watch. Of course, if you can't make it over to France, we'll have all the action and the drama for you on GCN+. It's set to be an entertaining French summer of racing. We'll see you then.